Hello and welcome to your Active's EU Tweets of the Week. This week, Slovenian presidency could be a free-for-all, Viktor Orban still has some gall, and we're all very excited about the football. This episode is supported by Yonez Das Soft Drinks Europe. More about them later on. Yesterday, Slovenia took over the six-month rolling presidency of the European Council. Its motto is, together, resilient, Europe. But, um, how shall I put this? There are issues. Namely, Trumpist PM Jana Jansa, who likes to troll think tankers on Twitter and doesn't much like democracy, said Sophie Pornschlegel. Controversial might prove an understatement. Emily van der Holst foresees a long six months ahead. Slovenia is also the only participating member state that has yet to send its candidates to the European Public Prosecutor's Office. Just got this invitation to the Slovenian EU presidency press junket, snarked American EU dude. Meanwhile, on her way to Slovenia, Commission Vice President Vera Jourova was looking forward to the discussions on rule of law, including media freedom and pluralism, and also on the cooperation with the Slovenian presidency. Is that shade? Staying with Europe's many Trump-esque dictators, Hungary's Viktor Orban has published anti-EU-sponsored content in far-right-wing Spanish press, much to the alarm of many, including Alberto Almano. How much did Orban pay to disseminate his anti-Europe propaganda in European newspapers? Asked Valerie Heyer. MEP assistant would be curious to see Orban's reaction if Rutte, Merkel or Macron bought a full page in a Hungarian newspaper to push back against his vision of Europe and illiberal democracies. But for that, you'd first need some free Hungarian media. Indeed, having bought up all critical news outlets in Hungary, the Orban regime is now trying to buy media space in newspapers across the continent. Leone de Jonge is compiling a list to see who does and doesn't do Orban's bidding. And fair play to the Times of Malta for defending fundamental rights and turning down Viktor Orban's advert. This episode is supported by Uanesda Soft Drinks Europe that represents the non-alcoholic beverage sector in Europe. Find out more about their new health and nutrition commitments, including another 10% reduction in average added sugars in soft drinks by 2025 by following them online. Finally this week, football! The biggest match of the week was England-Germany. Biggest match in over half a decade if you're English. But congrats to the England team for an emphatic win. Less support to the England fans who booed the German national anthem. As Jack Parrock said, it was hard to watch. Raphael Baer's prediction is that the post-Brexit narrative demands a Belgium-England final that includes a couple of really protracted VAR reviews, goes into extra time and ends in penalties. I'd actually be totally up for that. Burley Monster's halftime analysis, meanwhile, was rudimentary at best. Lots of kicks, some nice running about, no best kicks yet. It's in the goal that the goalman doesn't stop. Sure. The other big flashpoint was France-Switzerland and Giuseppe Fama discovering that he's been living in a Swiss district of Brussels as they knocked the French out. Laura Shields didn't even watch the football, just listened to the joyful yelling in the neighbourhood. Is it me or is Belgium celebrating more at France losing than their own victory? Asked Beatrice Rios. B, it's not just you. Katie Lee shared this entirely scientific data analysis. In fact, I think that might be an official Eurobarometer graphic. And that's it for another week. Join me again next Friday for more snarks and larks in the Brussels bubble Twittersphere.